He's going to go through this mock trial. He's going to go through this scourging. He's going to go through this rejection. He's telling the disciples about this so they can be prepared. And James and John, two of the 12, come to him and say, Lord, we want you to do for us whatever. Y'all stay with me. Whatever we ask. Now, at face value, that seems a reasonable request. It does. Keeping in mind that James and John had been with Jesus when Jesus had walked the roads of of Galilee and Capernaum and everywhere else and had walked up to blind people and said, what do you want me to? to do for you. What do you want? And they would say, Lord, that I might see. And he would say, go your way and see. Or what do you want for me to do? You know, to the leper, according to your faith, be it unto you. So they knew that Jesus was willing to do for people whatever people asked him to do in faith. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She touched the the hem of his garment. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. That's what she wanted, and that's what she got. You typically get in life what you want, but that's another message. So here is James and John, two of the 12. Lord, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Jesus said, what you want? Now watch what they want. Now y'all know I typically talk on two levels, right? The individual level and the corporate level for the church. Okay, keep that in mind. What do you want? And they said, grant to us that we can sit one on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your glory. Jesus, we know you're going to be king. The problem that they had is they misunderstood what the kingdom of God looked like. They were so used to seeing Caesar sitting on a throne with somebody on his left and somebody on his right. They imagined that is what the kingdom of God would look like. Jesus, now keep in mind, they already knew that they had power and authority. They already knew that. But now they're looking for position. Oh, y'all stay here. They have power and authority to do what? To proclaim the gospel, to make disciples, to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. I'm trying to tell you the church is empowered. They've got all of that. And the only thing on their mind is, Lord, when you come into your glory, give us a position. One on the right and one on the left. The power and the authority, well, that's good. But you know, am I talking to the right folk today? All right. (laughs) Power and authority to transform the world, but they're hung up on their position. Isn't it good that the church in the West doesn't struggle with that? Isn't it good that the church in the West can go out and make disciples with power and authority and don't have to worry about who's in what position? Isn't it great that the church in the West doesn't have to deal with that? (laughs) And somebody's thinking, we don't? That would mean you're hearing me. So watch this. Because we're going somewhere. Matthew 10, or Mark 10, 41. Now, when the 10 heard about it, so, so notice, so notice. <laughs> Look, now, notice what's going on. James and John had obviously called Jesus aside for a little private conversation. See, see, see you got to watch folk who always want to get called to the side with private conversations that don't involve the rest. Mm -hmm. Got to watch that. When the ten heard about it, they were indignant. Who do they think they are? 
So Jesus called them to him, and he said to them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles, they lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. The church needs to learn a very important lesson. We are not called and given power and authority and anointing to lord it over folk. We're given power and authority to be able to serve folks. And one of the reasons, amen, one of the reasons the church can't get involved in ministry outside of the context of walls is because we're too focused on what my position and my title is. Hmm. Nobody here. This is the church in Columbus. So Jesus said, listen, this doesn't operate the same way that the world system operates. The kingdom doesn't operate the same way that the world system operates. The world system operates from the top down. The kingdom operates from the bottom up. So we need to flip the script. We're so, I'm not going to chase that rabbit trail. So Jesus called to them, I'm learning, Jesus called to them. But watch this. Said, it's not going to be so among you. Whoever will become great among you shall be your minister. That word minister is not talking about licensed, ordained clergy. Well, I'm a minister. I'm a minister. I'm licensed and I'm ordained. I'm a minister. I've got good news for you all and bad news for you all. The good news is that you are all ministers. Amen. The bad news is you are all ministers. But pastor, you don't understand. I'm not called into the fivefold ministry. I'm not, I'm not called into set apart ministry. I'm not called to go to seminary. I'm not called to do this. I'm not called to pastor a church. I'm not called to be a missionary. I'm not called to do this. No, you might not be that, but you are called to serve. And ministry is just servanthood. That's all it is. So everybody think, well, it's the pastor's job to do the ministry. No. It's the pastor's job to equip you to do your ministry. Oh, don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good now. We want the pastor to do everything in the church. We want the, if it ain't working, it's the pastor's fault. If people ain't coming, it's the pastor's fault. If people just, it's the pastor's fault. If the, if it, it's the pastor's fault. If, if we can't pay a portion, it's the pastor's fault. My question becomes, what are you doing to fulfill your ministry? Hmm. Does this make sense? Am I talking to the right group? We going somewhere. God's up to something. And he's up to something big. But we got to flip this thing right side up. Somebody said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I say, if it's broke, fix it. So we got to flip this. Hmm. Now, whoever is going to be first among you, is going to be the servant of all. For verily the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus didn't come to be ministered unto. He came to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. In other words, it's not what the church can do for you. It's what you can do for the church. Mm. I don't know why this always happens. I start putting these messages together, and they're really nice, and they're this, and they always go, and they start digging down a little deeper. 
starts digging down a little deeper. But if the church is going to be a faithful witness in the 21st century, the church has to recapture its roots. And its roots have to do with going with power and authority. And the reason churches can't function, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, the reason some churches have a problem functioning is because of this thing about position. I want to be on the right and I want to be on the left. Now, we are all gifted. Anybody gifted in the house? Anybody gifted from God? Anybody gifted from God? So we all have a unique gift that is absolutely essential for that particular body to function. It's absolutely critical that each part of the body function according to its gifting. We looked at a little bit of that last week. It's absolutely essential. So we need to know what is my function. Not what is my position. Well, let me say it again. What is my function, not what is my position. Because if you're functioning according to your gifting, your position will be evident. The problem comes in is where there are people who want to be in position, but they don't have the gifting, so they can't function. So you got a lot of folk with titles. Titles. 